Hello. And welcome back to Volume. Hello. Well, I've just said that like a hundred times now, trying to get the audio sorted out. We've got microphones sitting on towels. Yeah. <laughs> we, can't, we can't rig them up to the table with the stands because the stands don't fit on the table because the table has like a weird slant thing yeah. on it. So impromptu set up, but yeah. we're going to work with it. If the audio sucks, bear with us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I have a feeling the audio is not going to be good in this one. The content is going to be good. And that's yeah. what matters, right? We're going to need to buy a little table or something. Yeah, a little podcast table. Up. Yeah. Um, but this is our first Spain-based yeah. podcast. We were thinking as well. I don't know if can people comment stuff and yeah, like, yeah. sure. I um, mean, if you wanna, if you wanna, if you're watching it on YouTube, you can comment obviously mm-hmm. on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast on uh, SoundCloud, uh, not SoundCloud. Um, oh yeah, you can listen to it on SoundCloud. Spotify, if you're listening to it on Spotify, Apple, Apple Music. Music, or now. Google Play Store? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Google Podcast? I don't know. You can yeah. listen to it everywhere. Anywhere you want podcast, you can listen to it. But if you're listening to it there, um, just uh, do like message me on Instagram, Sir Tom Gibson, at Sir Tom Gibson, or Twitter, at Sir Tom Gibson, or anything, or the volumes. You can yeah. message volumes. They're there all be ways volumes to get podcast. In Anyway, yeah. I was going to say, um, let us know if it's a good idea. We've got a little balcony now, so we were thinking of buying a little table and chair set for a balcony and maybe doing podcasts out there with the kind of noise of the city in yeah. the background. I don't know. Maybe a quirky idea. Be what? quiet with your sweeties. Sorry. I'm talking. <laughs> that is going to pick it up really strongly, though, isn't it? They'll love it. Yeah. Mukbang. Um, yeah, so maybe that's a good idea if we, yeah. we do the podcast out in the balcony. The question is, do you want the sound of pigeons or do you want the sound of me eating sweets? <laughs> um, or do you want the sound of absolute chaos? <laughs> because earlier in our street, we just came back from going to the bank and we heard screaming in the street. It's such a quiet little street we live in, a little narrow um, street in a little, t- uh, like a little quiet area outside yeah. the city centre. Um, so we thought we'd move to a lovely little neighbourhood. We looked out the balcony, everyone and their gran and their dog is out in their balcony. And <laughs> Hanging out the windows. And there's some fight, some domestic or something, I don't, I'm not sure. This woman swearing, crying her eyes out. And there's a guy phoning the police, there's a guy smoking a cigarette, cracks open a beer to watch the whole thing unfold. How many police cars came? I think there was eight police cars, two police bikes and 22 police officers. I, like within minutes in fact i think honestly within like 40 seconds yeah. of that guy phoning the police they were yeah. right there with their batons and their guns and they dragged this guy out of the house and he had him pinned to the ground it was mental it yeah. was crazy i didn't even know that they were allowed to carry guns here it's quite like i don't know yeah. I, I didn't think i'd be bothered by it but there's something really intimidating it's about really it really scared like tom doesn't get scared easily at all but we went to go try and get a padron yesterday which is basically just confirmation of your address but everything is so so difficult here in terms of getting residency so we showed up at this town hall after getting referred to 100 different places next minute there's a woman laughing at us because we can't speak spanish that great so she sends out a police guy with a gun in his pocket and i'm thinking how am i gonna work out what he's saying when my mind is racing at a thousand miles an hour sweating because he's got a gun uh, yeah the police are very scary here scarier yeah. than i thought they would be but that's crazy yeah um you were you were pretty scared weren't you yeah you I, felt it's just uneasy. Like, i guess it's like if i was back home mm-hmm. i'd feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. if they were carrying guns yeah but now i feel uncomfortable because i can't even speak to them and, and sort of like rationalize the situation yeah. because i don't know what they're saying they don't know what i'm saying <laughs> they've got a gun I have nothing. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's weird. Scary, scary stuff. But um, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we've not been in any situations that are, are detrimental to our health yet, as no. far as I know. We did walk through a square um, the other day. I can't remember what it was called. But basically um, the square where the town hall is. Yeah. It's in an area called San Francisco, actually. Yeah. And um, all these police vans showed up out of nowhere. I think there had been protests or something, but basically we get told to show and... From my experience, like being at um, climate protests in London, if people get told to shoo, people will try and challenge the police and hang about for a bit because they don't feel particularly threatened, you know? Um, 
And the police in the UK will try and not arrest people. I, well, that's controversial opinion, I guess, but I feel like in my experience, they've tried to not arrest yeah. people unless it really comes down to someone really breaking the law. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. here, as soon as the policemen told those people to clear the square, Everyone they left. So like, there was no, absolutely no back talk. People just went, not, and not scared. They weren't scared, but they just but they, knew yeah. their place. They were like, "Okay, the police have Obedient. said we need to go." Yeah. <laughs> we're we're tangent here. We we have not given any context. If you've never been here before, this is Volumes podcast. That's uh, it's usually got guests on, and we talk about things, whatever the guest is into, or whatever they are, their field is of study or interest or whatever. But right now, I'm with my girlfriend Lucy, um, and we moved to Spain. That's what we're talking about. We've moved to Spain. We're from... In the middle of a pandemic yeah. with uh, one month to go until the Brexit transition's over. And, and it's crazy. Like, such a small possibility that we're going to get um, our residency cards and yeah. things. But we're here anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, we, um, we're from the UK. Um, and Lucy's got a year abroad as part of our study, as part of our university course. So we have moved to Valencia. And it's pretty crazy because... Obviously, we are leaving. Uh, the UK is leaving the EU. Um, yeah, which complicates, already very complicated yeah, instructions, how to um, stay here more than three months. Yeah. I, did she <laughs> even try and explain it? Because we don't even know. I'll summarise. So, basically, my year abroad is as an English language assistant in a school just outside Valencia. And it's through a company called the British Council, which isn't actually the council, but... They're called, really? Yeah, I don't think it is. That's weird. They're called the British Council and they basically arrange all of this. So my uni, they're supposed to give us insurance and say, okay, on you go. But because of this whole situation, everything's been delayed, everything's up in the air. But me and Tom have come anyway, essentially. Um, but there is absolutely no guidance from university or from the British Council how to get what's called a TIE, which before we would have been able to come here no problem but because we are leaving the eu on the 31st of december it means that we need what someone coming to spain from the us or from australia or from japan or something like that would need which is essentially a foreigner's card um which allows you to stay in spain for more than three months but the process is very confusing there's no appointments available because everyone panic trying to get their cards um the lawyers basically buy up all the appointment slots, which means that you need to pay lots of money to even get an appointment that's sooner rather than five months down the line. And we do need it now. So seems very corrupt. Yeah, it's very, very corrupt system. And they acknowledge that their system sucks, but we still need to deal with it anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a real spanner in the works for what could have been a very simple year. And I could have been here a long time ago trying to get this sorted, but because the uni delayed um, allowing us to come, yeah, it's, it's hectic, but we're getting there and we've got a bank account set up. Um, we, still, <laughs> we, we still need to get Wi-Fi. We're at least in an apartment, a lovely apartment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but we've got bikes, very mm -hmm. janky to, bikes to like that. To give context <laughs> to why we don't have Wi-Fi as well. Also, I guess, I, I don't know if I'm really that bothered or not having Wi-Fi, but sometimes you're like, oh, wish I had Wi-Fi. Yep. <laughs> there's just nothing you can do about yeah. that. So that's annoying. But all in all... I mean, my time on my phone has dropped dramatically. So is yeah, Lucy's. it's very good, yeah. It's probably beneficial for <laughs> our health overall. It's beneficial until we need to use Google Translate. Like, That's true, yeah. And, and uh, when we need to find our way about. Because my navigational skills are terrible. I still don't know where I'm going. I still don't know where to turn when I come out of my apartment door yeah. to go to a certain place. I have no idea what I'm doing. But... Uh, I mean, I mean, your your skills speaking Spanish are pretty good. No matter what you say, they're pretty good. Mm. She's making a face, but they're definitely good. Um, <laughs> Not as good as they should be after how many years I've studied it. But, but irrelevant to that, they're pretty good. Fun. I mean, they're significantly better than mine. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, so that like getting by is actually quite straightforward. But as soon as you have to go and open a bank account, and we don't have that on our phone either, yep. so we have no connection to the internet at any point unless we go to like a cafe. Um, so open up a bank account. That's like words you don't you don't you know. Yeah. You, you just don't people really don't know that. that. Yeah, you, you, there's no reason to learn <laughs> things like 
like even the word account is a, to is be a strange fair, one. They should teach it because those are the ones. Those are is compulsory. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so those are uh, those are also the kind of things you could probably get yeah. taught at school. You should learn yeah. how to open up a bank account at school. Nah, and we're not taught that. stuff like my dog has yellow spots. <laughs> I mean, even regardless to learn a language, though, we should learn some basic yeah. understanding of how to like. I don't, I don't know. know how to open a bank back in Scotland. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea. Well, and we've just go. opened a bank account and we didn't even get a bank card. I don't know. I don't know what that means. And I just said to Tom, I'm just gonna phone my mum. And then that's we Tom's like, them. Well, yeah, but we should try and work this out ourselves. And I'm like, Do you know what? My mum probably doesn't even know. Because how is she supposed to know how it works in Spain? Mm. You know what I mean? And it's the first time in my life that I've been doing very adult things and my mum can't help me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's in my second language. It's it's very daunting, but it's it's a good life experience, isn't it? Like I um, think we'll come away from yeah. this. Party. I think we're gonna learn a lot from yeah. this. Yeah, I mean we're idiots. We Let's really be honest, are. Right? We are. Not, we're not gonna sugarcoat this. You're just listening to a couple of idiots <laughs> talking up on a podcast. We have no understanding of anything. I mean, since we've been here, I've lost my phone. I left my phone in the hotel when we travelled to the other side of the city. Tom left his wallet in a McDonald's. <laughs> like, we're, we're a McDonald's. Just we're only in. We only bought stuff in so we could sit so down could and use, use Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. <laughs> that sounds. T- that makes it sound like we really like rely on Wi-Fi, but oh, no, I guess we do. You do. People anyone, do. Yeah, I guess anyone, anyone in the 21st century relies yeah. on Wi-Fi, especially in what we do. We do a lot of yeah. stuff online. Like I've got a podcast. I'm a freelance photographer. Like a yeah. lot of that stuff needs. I need to be connected. Especially all the time. when we're getting, we're needing You've messages from lawyers, and we're needing yeah. to speak to people about important things. We do need internet. You need the internet. Yeah. yeah, everyone needs internet. But um, now that so you need uh, this TIE card thing. Yep. Or an NIE, which is more like a one that you get if you're local here. I think so. I'm not sure. Um, if if we were part of the EU still, if. Five years ago, we'd come, we'd only yeah. need an NIE, it would be pretty simple. Yeah, I just, again, disclaimer, you're listening to a couple of idiots <laughs> describe things they don't understand. No, you're listening to a couple of idiots describe something that is that no basically one can understand. impossible. <laughs> yeah. Every, every impossible, online yeah. forum tells you a different thing, and you can get a very simple version, or you can get a very complicated version, but every situation is different. That's why I feel like if you are going to do this, especially after Brexit, you yeah. just need to get a lawyer. Like it's just, beco- it's gonna well, become I mean, a case of if you have money, you can do this. And that may not even be necessarily true because after Brexit, it might be a completely different system right. that's set up. We right. don't know. We have no idea. The annoying part of all of this is that we're actually still in the Schengen area. The, the Schengen, like, uh, uh, what is that like alliance a or whatever? Zone, yeah. yeah. So we should we shouldn't need these kind of things. Yeah. Based on like the the rules of the the Schengen whatever. Yeah. But, I don't know. To be fair, it is good of them to... So, Spain are the only ones that have come up with this TIE, which is basically saying that after the transition period ends, we will still be able to claim all the things that previously a UK resident would be able to claim in Spain. So, as long as we've started the process before we leave the EU, then we'll still have access to those things for a lifetime, which is really good because other than that, we would have to... For a lifetime. Pay for everything, yeah. Yeah, I read that as well. We <laughs> I, no, I read that it's for a lifetime. Yeah. You get this card for a lifetime. Yep. But now every time I've been looking into it, yeah. it says for five years. Oh. <laughs> they, they don't. They just keep changing it, and they yeah. just hope that no one's noticing nobody what their initial knows thing what's going was. Going on, and nobody can help us. Mm-hmm. So we're honestly we're we're very um, confused at this point. But yeah. If you're in the same boat, stick to it. Um, try stay motivated. I've only broken down about 12 times. If you aren't doing this, message me or message Lucy yeah. and tell us what it's like for you or I'm wherever sure, you are. Yeah. Not even just in Spain, but anywhere. It's, it's so interesting to hear, like, because there's a lot of people that were doing similar things to you. Uh, they were going to Italy, right? Mm-hmm. Italy, Spain, and where was it? France. That? In yeah. France, right. So, like, there's those are completely different ways of going about it. And even in Spain alone, we're in Valencia, in the county of Valencia. But in different uh, regions, they're experiencing different things as well. Yeah. It's Because Barcelona is technically, well, I'm not sure technically or if people just see it this way, um, it's separate from Spain. Like, it's Catalonia. Mm. So it's very, very different culture, very different set of laws and regulations. But then isn't that the same here? A lot of people speak Catalonian. This is kind of Catalonian. This is kind of stuck between Catalonia and 
like Spain. <laughs> Spain. But they also yeah. speak Valencian Spain. here as well. Well, yeah, or the sp- older generation speak Valencian. So yeah. there's three languages that are very similar, but three different languages being spoken here, basically. Well, not three. Not three, because... Three well, different dialects, then. No, because nobody's speaking Catalan. It's just that people Every see Valencian as a, as a form of Catalan, but it's not. Uh, it's not... But I when you translate you it, they will that. say that. Do you it's know what I mean? So people say it's a dialect, but it's not. People would be offended if you said that Valencian is a dialect of Catalan or Catalonian. Because so wait, uh, Valencian it's is its own, own language. language. Yeah. So there is three languages here. Well, people aren't speaking Catalan here. They're speaking oh, Valencian. Right, okay. So there's two and languages, then, but one of them's Catalonian, yeah. and they just don't believe that. Yeah, another one is denial. what you would say Sp- as Spanish, but. Um, Spanish is actually called Castillon, I think it's called. So I speak a Castillon version of Spanish. Spanish isn't really a language, it's just... Spanish isn't a language. <laughs> you, don't, you think, don't quote me on that. You think sure. you know it's some Castillon. things and then you just don't. Yeah, it's, well, to be honest, I didn't really know that until about like two years ago either. That I wasn't really studying Spanish, I was studying... The dialect that they speak in mainland Spain, which is called Castellon. So is Spanish like the umbrella term? Yeah. So like yeah. a lot of South American countries, yeah. Spain and some other countries. And I'm not really speak sure. Spanish. You would maybe call it like an Argentinian dialect or um, a Mexican dialect or something, but the umbrella is Spanish, yeah, I think. I don't know if they have their own names for their own languages or dialects, but I'm not sure. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't even know if I can continue with the podcast after experiencing yeah. that nosebleed. But yeah, we're in Spain. We uh, we need yeah. So for Wi-Fi, we need that. We need a TIE. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a company that will give us a Wi-Fi without a TIE, which is like the biggest company in yeah. Spain Movies. for Wi-Fi. Movie star. Movie star. Movie yeah, star. or movie star or whatever. Movie star. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so that's what we're trying to do. But you need to open up a bank account here. A Spanish bank account. Which is something we'd need to do anyway. Well, the guy actually said we didn't need a Spanish bank account. Yeah, but we also couldn't do it. So. My UK IBAN wasn't processing mm-hmm. and it wasn't accepting it. So I yeah. just assumed, right, I'm just going to need a Spanish bank account. Because I need it anyway to be paid. So So now we think we have a bank account. Here. We think. Or you we have can't a bank log account. in, but she says that we should get a code by yeah. next week or something. So. But we don't have a, a card <laughs> or any details. <laughs> Or really anything. See, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's very mixed kind of culture here because, yeah, there's a, there's a very straightforward attitude. Like um, the other day we, let, we stopped to let a woman through, didn't we? And um, she gave us a big smile. And oh, then we heard her yeah. say thank you. But I immediately knew from her yeah. huge smile for letting her through that she wasn't she wasn't from she here Spanish. which isn't saying that people that are Valencian are rude it's just not they're just you, that European abruptness or fast yeah they're just very abrupt and very matter of fact yeah. you let me through cool <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah. um, it's not like big smiles and oh thank you so much yeah. or oh I'm really sorry I touched you there it's almost a bit more genuine actually yeah that they're just straightforward like, like when that. we spoke to the policeman at the town hall and spoke to the woman she well, she was condescending. She was rude. Yeah, I she think. was very rude. Yeah. But that's what I've heard um, a lot of people say when they go to do these things. They've got no time for people that can't speak the language, which is absolutely fair enough. I mean, we were talking about this the other day about how in the UK, if someone came in and they're speaking Arabic, the person behind the hill would just be like, "I don't know Arabic. Speak English." You know, mm, I yeah. think you would get that in a lot of cases. We are a very privileged language, yeah. and we. We expect everyone from, to speak yeah, our language, basically. Everyone speak yeah. English. And I feel even rude going into these places and saying, do you speak English? Just to see if it makes it a wee bit easier. Mm. Um, yeah, but the majority of people have been helpful. Yeah. And a lot of people actually do speak English yeah. well enough. Yeah. But it's purely because somehow, like, the way that the society of, of language is set up is that English is forced upon everyone. Yep. Yeah, people are just expected. Like people have been apologising for not being able to speak English, and I'm like, no, please don't apologise. Yeah, we need to apologise. Yeah, to you for coming I mean, I here speak and Spanish, and I'm Spanish. still asking you if you speak English because yeah. it's going to be easier because you'll probably know English better than I know Spanish, and I've been studying it for five years. You know, I can assure everyone <laughs> that they'll be able to speak English better than I'll be able to speak Spanish. In fact, they'll be able to speak English better than I can speak English. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're focusing a lot about the negatives. But the problem is the negatives 
are are just. It's what we're facing right now. Yeah, that's exactly the thing. You don't talk about when things go well. You talk about when things don't go well because they're the ones that are getting in the way. But these are the things that could help other people, you know. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) I mean, hopefully, hopefully, if you if you're in this situation. Maybe if you'd listen to this podcast for a couple of episodes, by a few episodes from now, we'll be nailing it. We'll get it done. <laughs> we'll just do the next episode in Spanish, will we? Uh, si. <laughs> Con queso. Um, well done. So proud of But, you. I mean, the, the overall atmosphere here yeah. is actually really nice. It's amazing, yeah. Everyone's quite laid back, which uh, can sometimes actually be a problem that they're a bit too laid back because yeah. people don't get stuff done. But, no, it's, it's laid back. It's yeah. a warm, kind of, like, nice feeling yeah. that's going on. Like, we've got these big open markets selling fresh fruit and selling fresh... Very cheap, very local. Selling fresh fruit and veg <laughs> and stuff like that. And, like, rice and beans yeah, and it's great. all this Everything stuff. Everything is unpackaged. It's yeah. absolute heaven. And, and there's so yeah. many little zero-wasting um, environmental shops, isn't there? Like, mm-hmm. all our toilet roll is zero waste and we've been getting all loose veg and yeah. it's all compost bins and things mm. like that it's great we yeah. just got a massive aloe vera plant for six quid yeah and tom didn't know how much that would cost but i'm like surely that would usually be like 30 quid i have no idea how much they charge so for. much for plants like that back home um but it's it's cool it's on our little balcony yeah. we're feeding it some of our, our like our excess what do you call that compost. yeah our mulch, <laughs> excess food junk stuff yep. Um, but I mean, really, it's it is a nice atmosphere. Yeah, it's, people are nice. Back home, people are always in a rush. They're always moving fast. Mm-hmm. They're like sliding between each other and everything. I I ran in the street once here, and I was getting people were looking at me like, "Why is he what running? Are you doing? Yeah. Like, why is he in a hurry?" <laughs> I was uh, calm down. Like, tell it. It, it was so strange to me that that. Uh, like no one, uh, there's there's running lanes here. Yeah. Like, there's the not lanes. just cycling lanes. There's running lanes. Like here. as if you're like don't run unless you're exercising. Yeah. And everywhere there's cycling lanes. Like, everywhere. And you know what is so strange that we didn't expect? Everyone has electric scooters here. Yeah. Like everyone, it's more common than bikes here. We've got bikes and we're thinking, well, it's good for the exercise, but maybe we should have got scooters. Nah. And they're, they're not even expensive. They're like 200 euros, by the way. Have you seen that? Yeah. 200, 300 I've, I've been euros. I've attention, but I mean, I don't Every want. scooter. I don't want a scooter. No, nah, me either, but it's really, really eco-friendly here. Very, very um, yeah. sustainable. And the apartment we're living in has a really good efficiency rating as well, isn't it? Like yeah, it does, yeah. Like e-waiting or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's hundreds of positives of living here. It's a great location because... It's it's essentially Mediterranean, isn't it? Yeah, totally. It's is, Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. Just across from my Ibiza, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Go a wee day trip. Um, <laughs> it's twenty minutes. The city is twenty minutes from the beach, so we yeah. can cycle there. Down That's a big twenty old minutes river. on a on a bicycle. Yeah. yeah, you could just cycle. So to the so beach. quick to get to the beach, but there's like an old river. Um, that's a, like a drained river that's like, like this huge garden all the way up the, yeah, the side lovely, of the city. Yeah, which is a, you can go there and you can cycle down there. They have really big cycle lanes. They it's are running the lanes there. the big city of arts and sciences, yeah. which is a huge science centre yeah. and a big IMAX. And if you want to see more photos, uh, feel free to check out our Instagram. Just give us a follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, no, but that's so cool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And what I like about that we've come right now like everyone knows that we're tourists and they all yeah. seem very confused like how are they here right now but i really like that because we are seeing valencia as it would be if there wasn't any tourists yeah. and how it would be you know like because you never see a country in its true form or you never see a city in its true form I feel like unless the only you go place, somewhere really far yeah out. the only place we can say we've ever ever experienced that was in um Tiraspol. Tiraspol, yeah and uh, transnistria or prenistrovia depending on your perspective <laughs> um in moldova and that was um like we got like a tour guide there our friend andrew lives there and you can check out that episode but um and he stopped just plugging stuff that i've done before um but yeah it, it's a unique experience to actually see and live basically like a local mm-hmm. here we're, we're we've got our own apartment we're making our own foods we're going to like the markets alongside the locals and everything yeah and we're not just going to wine at 3 p.m <laughs> <laughs> we're not just going to like the main street yeah and going to like the places that are clearly just for tourists and mm. and rely on like tourist money we're going to places that rely on locals money yeah. places that it's amazing they're still open after having yeah. lockdowns and stuff yeah. 
also we're region locked so we we can't even go anywhere else in spain right now we're stuck to just uh, the area of valencia but yep, the, province, the, the yeah. province of valencia is actually huge yep there's going to be tons of stuff we're going to be able to do here and yep, definitely. like they have huge mountains here and yep. um, these incredible walks i need to show you one actually i forgot to show you it's got, there's a one that you can walk and it has this big uh rope bridge mm -hmm. connecting oh, really? two mountains really? together really? it looks amazing <gasps> Um, there's obviously the beach. Like Central America, like in Central America, or not Central, but like in the US, like how they have these like big, yeah, yeah. yeah. What oh, I mean, yeah. Cool. Um, well, no, but I think in Canada they have those. I don't know. Is it like I just, I just agree to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, just big rope bridges. Big rope bridges, cool. yeah. Um, if you want to check it out, I'll mention it when I find it. Well, I'll talk about something right now. The weather here. It's crazy because clearly this is very cold for people. I packed hundreds of dresses and shorts mm -hmm. and things like that. And although at night time it does get a little cold and then the very first thing in the morning it is a little cold, everyone outside is wearing huge jackets, body warmers, scarves. Oh, that's welcome. It's called the Suspension Bridge Mir Mirador El Fandering Loop. And don't ask me what that means. <laughs> Yeah, but we for the first few days we were just out in like little tops and shorts and stuff, which was perfect for me. I was still sweating, but the looks we get, it's like you guys, you guys, <laughs> what are you? You are gonna get burnt clearly. We're just the two little palest people about, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I've people been keep to wear, asking like, us where we're sleeves. from. I don't want to get burnt. Yeah. How many people in the market say ask us where we're from? Yeah, and this little lady and a. Uh, she had like a Mexican food stand and she was like just telling us all about how much she loves Scotland and she would <laughs> love to go to Scotland and her four year old was it her daughter or niece or something yeah, her daughter, yeah. had been to Scotland and oh she was so sweet but people just love Scotland here don't they yeah I think it's because they just uh, like Lucy said this earlier like if you said you were from like America or you said you are from England they'd be like okay but if you say you're from generic. Scotland it's like what why why are you here like <laughs> It's just, I guess it's just a bit rarer, but yeah, they still know what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, the, the atmosphere here is pretty amazing. Yeah. It's, people are so nice. So far, I mean, people have been incredibly nice. Very slow living, which is always what I've wanted to experience. Yeah. It is truly Mediterranean. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. And how strange of the we've had to like completely change our regular schedules of things because, oh, yeah. I mean, back home, We'd wake up like maybe get up at ten. If it was like a lazy day, we weren't doing anything. We get up at like maybe ten or eleven, right? And we'd have a huge lunch slash dinner or well, I guess brunch, and we'd just eat a massive meal, and then we'd wait till dinner, and then we'd have a big meal at dinner, and then we'd wait till like twelve p.m., and then we'd have another meal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah usually something like that, but here we've not like when you go out midday, nothing's open because of like the times they've got set up yeah. here so everything in, in fact they don't really do anything in the morning either nothing happens in the morning here you can't get anything yeah. done in the morning except go to the market so you get up about yeah like no cafes are open in the morning yeah in fact very few shops it's literally just kind of like the market yeah. and things like that it's yeah everything is different because the bank is open like eight till two but then cafes are only open four till 11 or something yeah. there's also a 12 p.m curfew here right now because of covid so everyone has to be in their houses yeah. by 12 which is really strange and you need to wear your mask everywhere, everywhere you go as soon as you leave your own apartment you need to be wearing a mask yep um so unless you're eating obviously in like a cafe yeah, or something yeah, yeah. but yeah even outside which has been well hard for us because it's been so hot and we've been like wearing more clothes than we usually would have just so that we don't get so many mm. looks so we've just been sweating like absolutely drenched under these masks but we're going with it we're going with the flow um but here yeah. they have siestas mm -hmm. um yeah and, and a lot of regions now in spain it's totally outdated nobody has siestas but in valencia <laughs> it's still very much a thing yeah. yeah so everything from like half of one till about half five is closed yep they, like you'd struggle finding anything yeah. unless it's like a westernized we, place in yeah. a sense I, I know this is obviously a western a western country but well, I mean, it's like a, unless it's like a super sort of modern capitalist enterprise, like I don't know. 
Apple. like Zara or Apple and stuff like that, mm. they're all open. Yeah. But if it's anything other than that at all, it's yeah. just closed. It's Obviously, so cafes strange. stay open because a lot of people go for food then, but even some cafes will close. Um, but any, like any, even phone shops, they all close, yeah. like Vodafone closes. I think it's more common for people to actually have a, f- a physical siesta during the summer months, mm. but during winter, it's just keen, it, everything keeps the same routine, you know? Yeah. So people might not necessarily be going back to their houses to have a sleep, but I think so far they'll we've just only, be going to a cafe yeah, or something now. We've yeah. only done it once. What, had a siesta? Yeah. yeah. We needed and it. We, yeah, we were dead. We've actually had very, like, we've not had much time. We've been here since the 29th uh-huh. of October, and mm-hmm. now it's the 13th, oh, no. 13th yeah. of November. November. But we've had very little time to actually do, it, do anything, like, enjoy. Not that we've not been enjoying it, but we've just been having to go 100 mile an hour. Yeah. Like, bank account, mm-hmm. seeing flats, yeah. um, getting details and stuff like that, contacting lawyers and whatever. Just lots and lots of we stuff had to, to get buy done. Because, well, the apartment said it was furnished, but I had obviously some st- I had yeah. table chairs. So the woman was kind of hoping fridge. for someone that was going to be here very long term, and because we're only here for ten months or so, um, but she decided that she liked us and she trusted us, so she just let us move in here. But it's meant that we have to like kit out the kitchen, but she is fine. She's been really nice about it, and she's taking it off her bill for next month. So we had to do like a big IKEA shop and buy everything, but obviously we've had to do all that as well, and. There's little things that we keep realising that we need for the flat, so we need to run out and get stuff. Like, <laughs> we've not got a basin yet for the sink. And we've got bikes, though. Yeah, we've got bikes that we travelled by foot for and yeah. got them off of people in sketchy little alleyways, yeah. but we've got them now. Lucy's bike cost, like, £40 or yeah. something. Yeah, And mine, mine cost, like, 50 was yeah, it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Facebook Marketplace, who would have, who would have <laughs> <Yeah>. thought it? <laughs> Never used it before, but do you know what? It was actually quite yeah. fast. We got I them mean, very, very quickly and very our cheap. Our bikes are pretty good. Yeah, I think they're pretty we'll, good. We'll use them a little bit. They're all right. We only need them for 10 months, so. Um, but bikes and scooters are very much a thing here. Like, yeah, yeah. You, do, you wouldn't really get by if you didn't have them. Yeah, so I, I would really recommend it if you're coming. How many lanes there are specifically for bikes here? Like, and it's really simple as well, like isn't it? Like, we've home. been on them and yeah. it's really easy. It seems a bit daunting because we don't really have them at home, but it's so easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tom couldn't even ride a bike till a few months ago, could yeah, you? Yeah, no, I couldn't. So, if you, if you can manage, then anyone can manage. Um, yeah, here, that's weird to think. Mm-hmm. I, sometimes I forget that I only learned to ride a bike. Now you've bought one already like in a, a couple, new country. <laughs> a couple months ago. For just this summer, really. Crazy. Um, but it feels weird. It feels like this year i mean mm-hmm. this year has been a weird one mm-hmm. it's like where's it went this is november no it's almost halfway through november we spent the whole years locked away the yeah. whole year locked away in our houses yeah but and now we're in a different country when Just you think about the start happen? of lockdown that feels like years ago mm. how weird is that mm. it's just the t- time it, this is like maybe delving a wee bit deep but it really does play into that idea that time is just perspective, isn't it? Like, time yeah. is different for everyone. Time is not this thing that's passing us by yeah. at the exact same pace. We decide how fast time goes, mm-hmm. depending on our perspective. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. It feels like, although it's all happening in the same uh, sequence of events, mm-hmm. it doesn't really seem like those events are evenly spaced out. Like, yeah. ju- I guess, if I had one thing happen and then another thing happen how many little things have i focused on in between to make that yeah. time feel even longer yeah. or how little is there to make it feel even longer mm-hmm. because it took so long for that time yeah. to pass yeah it's weird but now we're in a different country and we're trying to figure out how to survive <laughs> here and it's crazy um i feel like days are going by really quickly here but i think then maybe that's just because it's winter and the sun's going down quite quickly and because we've been busy every day yeah that's it as if you're active every day time's flying if you're getting stuff done um, and staying productive yeah. then it goes fast and I think that's a good thing because I think that we're going to uh, stay productive here yeah um, we're going to really try and thrive yeah. in every aspect here so One, that um, by, by the time we get home and I go to do my final year in uni like we're set mm-hmm. and we know what we're doing with our yeah. lives you know yeah Oh god! <laughs> um, a lot is riding in this te- these ten months for working stuff out. Well, maybe this is what we should uh, 
sort of close this podcast off with is mm-hmm. what, what are our intentions here? What do you want to take away from this? What are your goals for this? If you have any, what do you want Plenty. this this sort of crazy year in a new country <laughs> to be filled with? Well, obviously my very first intention is that I learn the language because that's yeah. the whole reason I'm here is just to immerse myself in the culture, teach at the school and hopefully go away able to graduate with a Spanish degree and for it to not be a complete lie that I can <laughs> speak Spanish because honestly at this point like I do not know the language as well as I should do um, considering how long I've spent learning it but then it is a very different thing to learn it on paper and to learn the grammar of a language and then to be able to come here and understand it and speak it it's very very hard so that is my number one goal is to go away here knowing Spanish and being confident to say that I can speak Spanish you know yeah um but I also like this time away from family and away from all the familiarities of my usual life I want to gain some sort of like better confidence and more independence and although you're still here with me and you baby me in a lot of ways with taking me places making sure I'm okay I think I will gain a lot of independence especially in a job on my own traveling a few like like a half hour outside the city every day so I want to gain some independence and I also want to take all my experiences here to make sure that my blogs are, like I'm putting out blog posts constantly because I've really been la- lacking in creating content recently. What's your website? lucyferblog.com, check it out. L-U-C-Y-F-E-R-B-L-O-G.com. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I also really just want, I really want to tap into my creative side and get back into writing stories and things because it's something that I used to do a long time ago and I really enjoy and I know that I'm actually quite good at but just, just sometimes, yeah, really sometimes, master like it, master sometimes you can feel stifled like during lockdown I just felt absolutely stifled and my creativity yeah. wasn't going anywhere but this is going to hopefully give me some time to think and give me new inspiration and get me thinking along the lines of right what am I going to create mm-hmm. so yeah I really want to hopefully write a novel sometime soon if I have time here (laughs) or just get the basis for a novel in my head or just gain some kind of inspiration here yeah Yeah. and yes establish some sort of like professional thing grounds (laughs) yeah so that by the time I graduate I've got a portfolio of blogs and like possibly published 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 pieces not um, possibly, absolutely. Published pieces. <laughs> published pieces, yeah. Published articles. That's my real goal here. Um, so that I have sort of a name for myself and I can move on with confidence. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Um, I feel like the opposite to you when, <laughs> when talking about uh, lockdown. I felt like I was really oh, okay. creative during lockdown. I thought I you was... were going to say, I want to come out of here being a just pile of mush. I want my <laughs> brain to not know anything. I want to be anti-creative. <laughs> <laughs> I want to destroy all art. Um, no, I, I feel like I was more creative during lockdown. And not, not, not that I, I am no longer trying to be creative, but I felt yeah. like I could pursue it much more uh, easily mm-hmm. during lockdown because I had nothing in my way. Nothing to do, yeah. Yeah, and I had just this, all this time and I just I wrote tons. I, I, I even started painting for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't very good. <laughs> um, and I'm really, really not very good. Should I say, oh no, Tom, you're broken. No, I'm really bad. <laughs> like I, I would, I would definitely rather you say I'm good at things that I think you're I actually, actually am good, good at. at. But um, I mean, I'm not good in the sense that I can't create what my brain wants me to create. Yeah. I can't just do that. Um, but and I, I wish I could say I enjoyed it because I didn't even enjoy it either. It wasn't even fun to do because <laughs> I was so frustrated at the fact I couldn't do what I wanted to do. But here. I mean, I think we've got a very good big space, mm-hmm. a good big space for creativity. And we've it's got a lot sunny, of open and space you know, here. like everyone feels the same yeah. when it comes to the weather. The weather is such a big decider for how your mood is going to be that day. Mm-hmm. And every day here is sunny, and that just makes me so happy, and it makes yeah. me actually wake up with some positivity, which yeah. means a lot in terms of like creativity, doesn't it? Yeah, and most days, like when I'm awake, I'm just getting up now. Like I, I don't even want to stay in bed. I'm just getting mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Um, I'm like making myself a cup of tea, opening the, the blinds or shutters, opening the door, looking out, feeling the, the new morning air. It's really mm-hmm. good. It's a good atmosphere here. I mean, I keep saying the word atmosphere, but that's what it is. It's just yep. a really good sort of thing going on here. What was it um, um, the landlord's dad said? 
he said a really good Spanish word that uh, I don't think translated very well into English, but it was a good word that described the mm. aura of this place, and I can't remember it for the life of me. Ah, uh, we should we should call the podcast that. When I remember it, we should label the name of this podcast that word. That's cool. I Do really want. Wanna, yeah, I want to know okay. what it is now. I can't remember, but um, it will come to me. So yeah, I mean, well, yeah. You've definitely I, been waking up more positively because you've been waking up at the crack of dawn and going, do you want tea or coffee, Lucy? <laughs> and then, do you know what Tom made us for breakfast? He made us leftover pasta from last night. He whipped up some pasta at like nine in the morning and we sat and we ate bowls of pasta at half nine. And it was Seems amazing. Seems like a yeah, completely <laughs> adequate breakfast to me, yeah. But you've just been so sprightly in the morning yeah. and getting stuff done and waking me up with a nice wee cup of tea. It's been amazing. It's so. a nice, nice place to be. Yeah. Nice it's space. It's gorgeous here. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you're exaggerating how well I'm handling this <laughs> and saying that I'm babying you. I uh, I went to the shops yesterday to go. I went to the store yep. to go get some things. I gave Tom a list. I gave there was a shopping. I had a shopping list. list. In fact, no, it wasn't extensive. It was very short. It was quite short. Yeah, there was like six things on it. Mm-hmm. I came back with none of them. I came back with maybe two or three, but they were wrong <laughs> on that list. What was it again? We had I, I had some coriander. So and I, I didn't get that. It, no, well, he did come back with coriander, but he came back with crushed herbs, like a jar of crushed no, herbs. No, I thought I got coriander. cilantro. Yeah, no, it's the same thing. Oh, it's God. the same See, thing. This is the struggle I have. And what was the other thing? Cumin. You didn't find cumin, but there I was definitely cumin. cumin in the shops. Um, so there was cumin in the shops. There was not cumin in the shops. Found some today. I got them all wrong. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> but it makes me feel good because Tom's always so good at everything and I'm so glad oh, he can't do thank things Thank you. Now. Keep it coming. We've been um, arguing about tables and <laughs> stupid things around also, the apartment. Yeah, I mean, I went to the, went into a cafe to get Lucy a <laughs> uh, cupcake. What was that? Yeah, I said, can Slice I get chocolate cupcake? Chocolate cupcake. And cappuccino. A cappuccino. He comes back out and he goes, Lucy... So, I don't know if I got you the right things. I asked for an Americano and banana ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was literally crying, laughing so hard that the woman came out to give us the food and she was, like, checking if I was okay because I was crying my eyes out, wasn't I? I must have looked like a lunatic. I was sobbing all over the table. <laughs> I tried, I tried. I enjoyed it anyway. No, it, it actually was the right thing, wasn't it? It was yeah. kind of the right thing, yeah. There was I, just some yeah. confusion. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Just, the brain just turns off and I just start saying things. Yeah. Basically how I handle this podcast, my brain turns off and I just start saying things and then boom, I've got a podcast. That's why, that's why they're so good though. It's just, just absolute spew. Mind spew. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my intentions for this is, yeah, create creativity, mm-hmm. creativity. I want to write a lot more. I want to take a lot more photos. I want to mm-hmm. create some, uh, like published pieces yep. uh, in photography and in writing. I want to really dive into all that kind of stuff. Um, I want to slap out a podcast, a minimum of one a week, hopefully two a week. Yep. Um, You're going to need to find some guests that can speak yeah. English. Well, I mean... As soon as we get internet, I can talk to anyone across yeah. the world. Hopefully, I'll be able to speak yeah. to anyone and everyone. And mm-hmm. I mean, if you're a person that wants to be on the podcast and you're someone that has interesting stories or an interesting situation, or if you're listening to this and you're in Valencia, hit us yeah, up, please. Valencia, we need friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need. We have friends. no friends because we've been so busy and because I still haven't making friends. But yeah, we'll get there. Um, we've got our friend gave us a um, Spanish joke book, so that will he- yeah. hopefully get us places. That'll, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's hope. it's gonna give us great street cred. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's going pretty good. Yeah. It's going pretty good. Well. High um, five. My, uh, whenever people ask me, Fair. yeah, you can hear it. Um, <laughs> whenever people, whenever anyone asks me, a few people asked me before coming here, like, they're like, "What's, what do you want?" Like, obviously, because I'm basically just tagging along with Lucy. Mm-hmm. They were like, what, what, are you gonna, what are you gonna do there? What do you want from this trip? And I says, the, the one thing that I thought of before coming here that I really wanted to do was I wanted to leave with more money than I came with. Mm-hmm. So that's like a small little goal that I have in the back of well, my mind. That's a big goal, but. <laughs> well, it's actually quite a small goal because I came with so little money that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess if, so. I, if I leave with less money, I'm in negative equity. <laughs> so really, it's, it wouldn't be that hard. Um, 
but yeah we'll get so there. I either need a job or I need you to listen to this podcast and show it to your friends and stuff so I can get sponsorships because I would honestly I don't want to incriminate myself but I'd kill someone just so I could do this the rest of my life because I <laughs> enjoy it it's fun yeah, I enjoy you're good it. At it you're good at it it's weird like this situation mm-hmm. because I'm just talking and yeah. I'm just talking with you you know but when I'm with uh, a guest um, that I maybe don't know or I want to ask them more questions about something I, I, I obviously don't go into any of them with any questions like in my uh, written down or like preconceived ideas or anything I just talk but the difference is I always know that I ha- I'll think of another question and you'll learn stuff yeah too. and I'm learning but now I'm just I'm just saying stuff yeah it's kind of strange I, I feel not. like it's good to have that variation in a podcast though maybe like, yeah you've got Who some knows? that are specifically about a topic and then others yeah. that are just about Mm, whatever I nonsense, want to talk about yeah. whatever you want to talk about not really nonsense I guess I mean everything's nonsense yeah you, hopefully you learn something from this um, but. but yeah I mean if you enjoy this let me know please let me know message yeah. me tell me let me know get any topics you want us to talk about because I mean I don't know how long it will be until you have a guest or something yeah but um, yeah if you've got any topics that you want just us to talk about yeah. or you can you, I mean if you're stuff, yeah, if you're listening on YouTube you can comment on YouTube, but just, just uh, you love conspiracies. <laughs> um, message me. I feel like most people message me, and I feel like that's the best way of going about it. If you yeah. want, I feel I want to know something, or you want to tell me something, just message me. Because I'm not even. Or you can even you could do one over the internet media. as well. Or over the internet, I actually sound so old. Yeah. You could just do one on like Skype or something, couldn't you? You could do a podcast over Skype or Zoom. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. If I, if right I have now. the internet, yeah. then I could talk to anyone anywhere. Yep. That's exactly... Exactly. Yeah. Which is... Uh, yep. I mean, I've done a few because of lockdown. Yep. Um, and they're over the internet. <laughs> over the over internet. Over the internet. That does sound like such an old-fashioned thing to say. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, if, if you... Uh, this, this podcast, uh, obviously, they're all uploaded to YouTube as well, so you can check them out there. Everything's all volumes. Mm-hmm. But... This isn't going to have any video to it, and there's been a few that don't have any video to it. And I was just testing out like what the deal is, uh, if that's any good, if people are uh, even engaging. On to be honest, overall the views on YouTube are are quite incremental compared to what they are like as as listens and downloads yeah. in other places. So I'd, that's why I'm like, is it Maybe even worth? Just want the lesson, yeah, yeah. Is, is it even worth the video? Like, yeah. do people care for the video? And are, are they even using YouTube for the video? Yeah. Um, but if you're like, yeah, do you know what? The video is actually much more engaging. I prefer the video. Let me know. Um, do a poll. Do a poll. Yeah, but then a poll is so easy to answer, and people just give them answers yeah. for the sake of that. If you actually care, if you actually care to watch the video, if you're sitting message here, message me. R- like writhing with yeah. anger right now. How dare Tom, Tom remove the video? <laughs> <laughs> the video was the only thing I liked about this podcast. I don't. I listen to it muted. I just want to look at that man's silly hair. I mute this show <laughs> and watch it, and that is all I do. I just look at them talk and I try and create my own words for the conversation. <laughs> Bring back the video. Damn. Do you know what? I think I'll, I need the video now. I look, need the video. If you want the video <laughs> and the podcast, start a petition. Use the hashtag. Bring back the video. Track us down. Hold us at gunpoint. Just let us know. Somewhere there needs to be a revolution here. If you care about the video, <laughs> just you need to tell me. Right? Yes. Okay. okay. Send me a letter or an email over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to wrap this up. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening this to us. It's been fun. Thanks for letting us mind spew. Um, and yeah, again, if you want to tell us about the video, just has up and if you want to see what Valencia looks like look at our social medias yeah. they're, uh, we're going to be Fern making videos and, and stuff as well and putting them on YouTube and all that uh, yeah. videos videos <laughs> bring back the videos <laughs> right so stupid um, yeah this was volumes uh, episode one of Spain do you want to say do you want to say goodbye in Spanish uh, hasta luego well adios adios <laughs>